So what is the regret restructure? This became the theme related to a central piece around which uh, the whole sector changed in 1990. And later on was partial competition. So the regulatory structure, um, the regulatory commissions are a three member quasi judicial body. Members are appointed by government, but not directly. There is a selection committee consisting of representatives coming from three places. They select two names per vacancy. And out of the two, one needs to be selected by the government. So government has limited choice. Um, there are some loopholes, which we were trying to uh, plug in 98. We were not very really successful in that. It came in the neither in 2003. The loophole is, if the minister does not like uh, both the names, minister can reappoint the selection committee. Until he finds the right candidate. Until he finds the right candidate. As I will discuss later, initially uh, the government did not understand what creature they were creating for an regulator, how powerful that creature would be. But uh, later on they realized what this creature can bite. And the kind of people uh, have, they are being appointed are very different, which was known. We were predicting that, that the first generator regulators would be very different than the second generator regulator. So what is the regulatory structure? This became the key related to a central piece around which uh, the whole sector changed in 1990. And later on was partial competition. So the regulatory structure, um, the regulatory commissions are a three member quasi judicial body. Members are appointed by government, but not directly. There is a selection committee consisting of representatives coming from three places. They select two names per vacancy. And out of the two, one needs to be selected by the government. So government has limited choice. Um, there are some loopholes, which we were trying to uh, plug in 98. We were not very really successful in that. It came in a neither in 2003. The loophole is, if the minister does not like uh, both the names, minister can reappoint the selection committee. Until he finds the right candidate. Until he finds the right candidate. As I will uh, discuss later, initially uh, the government did not understand what creature they were creating for an regulator, how powerful that creature would be. But uh, later on they realized what this creature can bite. And the kind of people who they, they are being appointed are very different, which was known. We were predicting that, that the first generator regulators would be very different than the second generator regulator. Uh, members cannot be removed easily. So once appointed, like the election commission, members cannot be uh, removed very easily. There's an elaborate process to remove. At the same time, members are supposed to be uh, are required by law, not supposed to be required by law, to uh, disclose their uh, interest with power sector. They cannot own any shares, etc. Et uh, not just when they're commissioners, but even two years post retirement. So it's a fairly strict. Uh, uh, appeals to this body's uh, decision can only lie in a specialized body called appellate tribunal. Um, and uh, ab above that is only Supreme Court. So this is uh, all the regulatory commissions uh, appeal against that go to so uh, appellate tribunal. From there directly it goes to Supreme Court. Um, what are the functions of regulatory commission? Um, functions are fairly wide. First function is issue licenses. What is a license? License is um, permit to do business. So a distribution company, Bangalore distribution company, is given permit to do business here, to lay lines, to dug up things, um, to uh, give connections, etc. etc. So all that is on basis basis of a license, and that license is many conditions. Uh, and the regulator designs those conditions. Regulator can say that, okay, I will give you a license, but then you have to give connection to whoever asks for connection within 24 hours or X hours. Or I will control uh, what is the um, connection charges. For a new connection, you should only charge this much um, fees and so on. So license for distribution and transmission. For generation, the license doesn't actually apply. They don't need license. 
but what is controlled is in what price that power will be purchased by others. So I can set up a power plant, but I may not be able to set it to anyone, then you know, I will be doomed. So I wouldn't set up a power plant until I'm sure that someone is going to buy my power. And who decides at what rate the power will be purchased? That regulator decides. So the regulator doesn't decide whether you will build a plant, but say if we the distribution company, like Bescom, at what rate Bescom will purchase from whom, that regulator decides. The function of the regulator is to give license, which implies deciding what license condition can to be followed by distribution company. Um, regulate the rate of power purchase. How much power, power will be purchased? When? Um, there should not be shortage of power. There should not be glut in power. Because the power plant is sitting idle, you will have to pay the rent of the power plant. And it will become too expensive. So it, there's no point having too much of excess of power. Neither there should be shortage. Uh, regulate tariff, decide the tariff for sale of electricity and what price electricity will be sold. Um, and that depends on what is your generation cost, what price you are buying power, what is the cost of transmission, what is the cost of wires, what is the manpower cost. All these costs have to be added up to come to the final cost at the point of sale of power. But deciding cost is one thing reasonable cost. But deciding tariffs is the second thing. So I can charge lower tariff to you and higher tariff to him. Or vice versa. So that is two factors in one. One is approving different costs of different entities and then distributing that cost among the users so that all that cost is recovered by the utilities. So tariff decision involves two functions. One is approving different costs and allocating between the consumer. Uh, he can force the utility to sell the assets. Uh, so if the uh, chairman Karnataka Electricity Board finds that one of the utilities is doing badly, he can say, sell, sell off your assets. That whatever price is uh, anyone wants to purchase, they will purchase. There is a group of vested interests which controls these public sector organizations. They are contractors, they are powerful consumer groups, rather than groups, individual consumers. At times, big industry. Big industry does a lot of stealing, by the way. It is perceived that Joker Patti here, there, does stealing, but actually, it is a large industry which does systematic stealing in a big way. And um, particularly in um, uh, nor uh, eastern and uh, northern uh, parts of the world, Chhattisgarh and um, Orissa, even many states are the case. So that is uh, why I'm emphasizing this point is it is not, although households do a lot of chori do. They do cooking, they do lots of stuff. I'm not saying that only industry does it, but both it, they were in both places. So these vested interests of contractors in different form and consumers was controlling the utility, uh, hand in glove with the minister and officials. So that was the situation. And people did not have any um, voice apart from election time. Election time, minister would come for votes, that time people could shop. Post election for five years, they have no problem. So we saw this situation to be problematic and we said that basically this is because of subversion of the transparency, accountability and participation procedure. Because the thing is not transparent, uh, who the contract is given is not known, etc. That led to control by vested interest and undermining the public control that led to irrational decisions and operational inefficiency and that led to the financial crisis. So that was our analysis. So we said, okay, so in this context, Dabur is just one example of that. There are many such examples. Um, the vertical axis shows cost per kilowatt. <coughs> and uh, forget all the other axis, which is size. But how high the point is shows how costly the power plant was. Most of the international power plants were in the range of 400 to 600 dollars per kilowatt. And that one was at 1200 dollars per kilowatt. Three times. What was more than double the other one? And there were a Chinese uh, Hong Kong power plant, which also um, came into real trouble. Um, so, uh, most of these power plants internationally uh, were at that price. And they could do the whole kind of contracts. Because no one was allowed to see the contract. It was signed in a closed room. No one could question that. So this lack of transparency and accountability procedures were the key in 
the mega inefficiency of the same. 